Hi, this is Prios, and yeah, today we will do part two on how to play GTO perfect. Well, I'm not perfect, but yeah, how to play GTO on two high card boards. And yesterday we had the boards where the flop is rainbow, and yeah, today we will go into boards where it's not rainbow but where we have a flush draw possible and see how the frequencies change yeah if you don't watched yesterday's stream i highly recommend to do this too um, we had a lot of findings and yeah i found that i was constantly mi misplaying some boards according to gto and yeah you probably do the same so check it out to improve your game and yeah but so it's recommended to watch this part too but yeah i guess you can also watch this first and watch the other one second so yeah this shouldn't be yeah this should be okay so um yeah let's get into it let's first do the single raised 100 pb pots and let's start with the ace high board and yeah let's start with the first position and that is offered here and then watch the other ones too on the ace high boards usually the preflop aggressor will have a very high aggression um is it less or more on the On the rainbow board yeah it's a bit more on the board with a potential flush draw so yeah but a side boards favor the preflop aggressor a lot and yeah that's why you will bet a lot okay i forgot to turn back to the board we actually wanted to analyze so how much should he bet in position? Yeah, that's basically the same as on the board without a flush draw. And if he bets, how much raises should go in? Almost no raises at all. I guess it makes sense because the range of UTG is much more nullet than the one from the button. Let's now move on to the board without an ace, but with too high card still and yeah it's it's the same as yesterday um surprisingly um the preflop aggressor wants to play this very very passive not doing much betting yeah button is not betting much as well and once button bets yeah the preflop aggressor continues to play this not too aggressive only check raising 11% mm. let's have some fun and look into his check raising range I guess a lot of draws and some sets so also some weak draws I mean you have to have some bluffs yeah, one pair sometimes check raises top pair especially okay top of a flush draw is, is decent mm, flush blocker so top pair with a flush blocker is used as a main bluff and even a weak flush blocker is good enough uh, okay, sets to check raises, but not that many. Okay, I also made a mistake. Let's redo this step with all hands and not only the mate hands. Mm, where are the raises coming in? Uh, no pair, high flush draw, open and straight draw. Okay, good draw sets. Sets of out backup want to play passive still. Set flush block open straight draw also plays passive. 
Top and bottom, flush blocker. Top and bottom, not flush blocker. Top pair opening a straight draw. And this hand is turned into a bluff, and once we get raised, we still fold. Pay a high flush for a gut shot. I guess this one then also gets it in. Top pair flush blocker gut shot. Well, that's definitely a bluff. Will fold where yeah, the race is coming. Uh, back to a flush draw so that you can continue on more turns. Blocking yeah, these hands definitely will bad fold. Uh, that flush blocker is better to use than the lower flush blocker stuff. Um, set high flush draw. Wants to re raise, makes sense. Set low flush draw also raises the majority of the time. And if you have like not much naughtiness but um, have possibilities in all directions with a straight draw, with a flush draw, having a good mate hand already, then you also just want to get it in. Top pair, that flush blocker got shot. Okay. Top two flush blocker open straight draw. Okay, so if we check raise, how much of our check raising range will still fold? Uh, not that much. I guess, yeah, even strong hands like top pair. Uh, bottom pair, not flush draw. Okay, that's interesting. I think most people would not fold anymore once they check raised. Over pair, not flush blocker. Okay, makes sense for sure. Um, top two. Yeah, seems like top two also will still fold. Uh, most opponents that race will not fold top two anymore, I can tell you. Top pair flush blocker and gut shot is also a bluff, as I already said before. Uh, I mean, it makes somewhat sense to fold top two in the nut flush blocker because then you eliminate a huge chunk of your possible of the possible semi semi bluffs your opponent can have. So top two flush blocker and the gut shot. Look at this. I mean, no human fools it. I mean, this feels like a waste if you raise it and then fold. Even with an ace where you could outdraw drop two still and also have a gut shot. Well, it still wants to fold. Yeah, so that's again labeled wrong. We only have the label OESD, and this also includes reps. So, yes, yeah, sick.
Um, now moving on to the queen high boards. Swiss again played very passively. I suppose it is. Yes, it is. And hmm. Barton also plays relatively passive, but less passive as on the king or a side board. Although on the a side board, yeah, <laughs> your opponent is very strong and he bets most of the time, so that was not a bit good, not a good comparison. Um, um <coughs> let's look into buttons betting range so also some weak stuff in there okay that's not the weak um, but the first the pair not flush broker gacha is not the strongest Top and bottom, high flush open and straight. Oh, yeah, that's strong. Um, no pair, not flush blocker and gacha. This is very strong and should be bad all days. This is also not that strong, but yeah, you block a lot of stuff and you often take it down right away. No pair, not flush blocker open and straight draw. That's way better than an open and straight draw. Um, yeah, these are reps. No pair, not flush draw, got shot. Um, but this is also checked a bit. Again, this is a general theme and um, in GTO ranges you see this a lot. Sets are often played passively and used to strengthen your check back or checking range. And yeah, here you see it again. Sets are checked more often than that. I mean, it could also make sense on a board like this because when you get check raised, you are not that happy, especially if you don't have the top set. Because, yeah, a lot of turns will change the board structure and you will not know what to do. And yeah, you will also disguise your hand very, very well if you check back. Although, um, I think this is also something most demons down to or not doing and not do enough. Bottom pair high flush or no pair flush blocker got shots. Yeah, though, this is also often used as a war bluff yeah okay how much check raising should be done here not much moving on to the jack 10 board yeah the betting frequency from the preview aggressor is highest on asi and then it's the lowest on the king high boards with two high cards and it's increasing um when uh, lowering the high card so on the queen high board he's spelling a bit and it's going up a bit i mean from nine percent to 15 percent or something uh, do we want to look into his bets i mean why not Ninety-eight percent, and now we are done. Middle pair, not flush blocker. Uh, top pair, not flush blocker. So this is the betting range is highly built about having interaction with the flush draw or the put blocking the same. No pair, high flush draw. Mid pair, high flush draw. No pair, flush blocker. Not flush blocker. Open and straight draw. 
top and bottom, not flush draw, gut shot. No pair, not flush draw, open and straight draw. Okay, that's a monster. Uh, sets again. Slow play a lot, even when having a flush draw. So, yeah. That's how a good balanced range lo should look like. Top two high flush draw, open and straight draw. Should check most of the time. So if he's faced with that, he's still not folding much, although his range should be very strong. And if it's checked the button, which should happen most of the time according to GTO, we will bet a little less when half port and I guess the uh, check raising frequency will also be low yeah but it's it also um, increased a bit um, when the highest card on the board got lower so yeah we are finished with this and now we have UTG versus BB starting with the ASI board again What? Okay, hopefully that makes sense. Uh, the beautiful aggressor again has huge advantage and that's why we want to check to him. We also have a war, lot of weaker hand. We are, in general, a lot weaker can have a lot less nuts. Most people will not be able to have top set ever, so yeah, makes sense. This should be, this is the same as all ASI boards, preflop aggressor has a huge advantage. And yeah, our rangers play accordingly. Now we move to the king queen board. Now yeah, it's we are out of position. Want to check a ton. Uh, although he's not betting that much. How what what is the bar? What about the check raising range? Is it a lot or and not very much? So yeah. The, I guess he, Prefer Aggressor, again has decent advantage on bots like this. <clears throat> yeah, on this one, so after blind defense, we want to play very passive these bots. Yeah, not even having, not even defending the minimum defense frequency, which would be like 57% or something. And yeah, so we would be allowed to fold, what is it, 43%, but yeah, we are constantly folding more than that. Yeah, Jack 10 is also played passively. And I think from the ki highest card king to the highest card jack, um, the continuation bet frequency went up a bit, and yeah, also the check raising frequency. Uh, let's study uh, once again what the continuation bet uh, should look like, and yeah. What, how BB should react and which hands are good to race with. Okay, big draws and hands that block big draws should be betting. Again, the nut flush blocker is utilized a lot in GTO ranges. Middle pair nut flush blocker is is good enough to bet every single time. To 
Spinner Fish Blocker will also bet always. Sets with backup bet the majority of the time. Top two as well. Mm. So what are the hands we use as a slow play? Little pair high flush draw wants to check more often than to bet. Oh no, that's actually not true. He wants to bet more often than check, but uh, yeah, like one third he wants to check back. Bottom pair flush blocker gut shots. Give that hand. Will not will will be turned in a bluff. And checking back again a bit more than a, one a third uh, than one third sets again. Slow play a bit or more than you would expect probably. What are the main checks? Top and bottom with a guard shot wants to check most of the time. Bottom two also controls the bot even having good draws as well. Over pairs also don't want to bet on this board, makes sense. And even over pairs with uh, additional weak draws don't want to bet. I guess this hands like these ace ace eight nine probably will be bad by most, but according to the solver, this is a high frequency check or even a hundred percent check. Middle pair high flush draw and gut short should check ninety one percent. So let's now look into the big blinds range and how he constructs it. So the bottom flush blocker calls always top two, not raising a single time. Bottom two with a gut shot, also not raising. Even bottom two with a flush blocker and an open straight shot, don't want to raise. Wow. Sets with a nut flush blocker, even sets with a nut flush blocker and a gut shot call 100% of the time. No pair, not flush, draw, got shot. Is this hand folding? I guess that's again a wrap. If raising, no, it's not. But yeah, it, it's relatively strong. A seven might be good. Queen is always good. Hearts are good. Back to flush, draw. It's also in the mix. Okay, um, top pair, high flush draw, open a straight draw. Top pair, high flush draw, top two, flush blocker. Okay, so some top twos raise. Top and bottom, high flush draw, gut shot. Probably not folding any more than I guess. This probably folds if it's getting jammed. Uber pen and flush blocker is sometimes turned to a buff. Nothing too um, insane or too surprising yet. 
let's now continue with the more important um, spots which come up more often and which in general seem to be more interesting that's uh, interesting I would say uh, very interesting um, the cutoff is approval aggressor it's an a cyborg but he still wants to check 60% only bet 40% of the time I guess the button will also be uh, playing quite quite passive yeah it is the case and yeah i guess also against a continuation but he will not attack a lot yep and so now moving on to the more interesting board yeah it's the same for uh, as for rainbow boards we want to check almost always Yeah, hi Georgie. <laughs> uh, yeah, sick. And how often will the button bet? Not that often. Seems like the ranges match up quite well, and no one feels or has a decent advantage. Cutoff is out of position, but yeah, might have. Uh, I'm not sure about this actually, so I'm yeah, not sure how the ranges match up, but yeah, it's, I would guess that it's pretty even. Yeah, for sure, obviously, ask. Questions are always welcome. I think I learned in school there are no dumb questions, only dumb answers. Is this the saying? <laughs> Oh, it might be. Uh, uh, again, free throw aggressor, almost no continuation bad frequency. I mean, many people or almost everyone plays this differently. I don't think that people check almost entire range on bots like this out of position. I mean, I, f I guess the frequency of continuation bets would probably be like 60% or something for most. Yeah, it's also not detect quite often. And do we have many check raises on boards like this? I guess not. Yeah, we don't. Uh, what about the Jack 10? Yeah, again, played very passively. And on the button also um, attacks with less than half of a cent. And once he's betting, he will not get check raised a lot. Button versus big blind. That's a very interesting one. Both will have very wide ranges, but I guess I mean on the even on the A side boards probably the preload aggressor will be not as aggressive as he is normally. Mm, yeah, BB checks almost entire range. Yeah, we could simplify it to 100%. And he will, yeah, he will check a lot. As I said, I mean, he's opening like 50%, so he has to be cautious to not uh, overbet or not overbet or bet too much. <laughs> overbet is more uh, no limit hold'em term for betting more than the pot. That's not possible here, unless you play on RCR on the no limit Omaha tables. Yeah, used to play them back in the day. Crazy action happening there. Where well, you can like open shove aces and you will get caught from some bullshit <laughs> for 100 PV. Um, or when it's like limp, 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 you shove and then they call. <sighs> Good old days. I think probably that's still the same these days. Yeah, also not much check raising. Let's go to the king high board. That's a lot more interesting, I guess. 
Big blind is still checking a dollar decent amount. Yeah, almost always. Let's make it 100% for simplicity's sake. And yeah, he is also knowing that he has a wide range and therefore is not being too aggressive and checking back a lot of stuff, trying to not get exploited. Mm, Queen I ward will not change much. Um, the betting, the donking frequencies goes up the lower the top card gets, but yeah, it's still, he could still be, probably play 100% check and don't lose much UE. And yeah, again, more checks when bets from the button. And if he bets, he will get check raised, not often as expected. I mean, both have very wide ranges given these positions. And yeah, on Jack 10, we uh, now have two figures, but still um, not that much donking. And yeah, he also will check back the majority of his hand. So let's come to the user question and then continue with the, are we in free build pods already then? No, we will be, we will be stuck with the small blind versus big blind. So the blind battle, but after what we can come to the three build pods. So what did he wrote? I have this feeling I'm a bit stuck with PLO. It seems always I am versus the top range. And when I have top range, I never get action. And when I'm bluffing, I get called. Uh, super odd feeling in the last months or so. Uh, okay, so you're probably in a downswing. Did you have the same feeling during times in your career at some point? Yeah, I, you often have this feeling. Um, this also was the same for me when I restarted to play. Um, in the beginning of the year, I was very um, running very good, playing better. I mean, when you run good, you most of the time also play better. I was starting with like 12 BB per 100 or something. And then I had a stretch of like, what was it? Maybe 40, 50 K hands where I was losing or playing break even. And it felt like that everything I did, it was always wrong. When I stacked off light, he had the top of his range. And yeah, when I was bluffing, I got called. And when I had something good, it felt like people could see my cards and full it's instantaneous. So yeah, um, I guess this is normal. Um, but if this, um, goes over a very, very, very long stretch. Um, maybe you are too easy to read, but yeah, I think that's probably not, uh, not the issue because even if you yeah, have some very exploitative uh, tendencies and leaks where people can, yeah, read from your bet sizing, for example, what, uh, how good your hand is. Um, most people will not recognize. So yeah, it's, I guess it's just a odd feeling, but yeah, that, that's human nature, but probably everything is okay. You are just in a downswing. I mean, that's my guess. I mean, so far when we, uh, talk strategy and stuff, you seem to be a very smart guy and thinking about sports, analyzing situations. So yeah, this happens to like everyone all the time. <laughs> Uh, so, yeah, I, I would um, guess that you probably just ran bad lately. But yeah, um, still you should question your game. Maybe look into sessions uh, and find out if something's going wrong. What, what actually helps, I think, is record a complete session of yours and then um, go through the entire footage and sometimes you will find things that you would never have expected. For example, you might in autopilot fooled way too much or three bad, very marginal or bad hands or yeah, whatever, whatever. like 
you will find stuff you could not even remember. Or maybe what is my one of mine of one of my biggest leaks. Um, I am very talented and good in thinking to have the nuts, but in reality, I often don't. So the board paired, I have the nut flush, but it's not the nuts anymore. But I didn't recognize what it paired, and then I bet very big, and I get raised, and then I wonder what the fuck is going on here. And then I take a closer look, and then I'm oh, that's not good. <laughs> Oh yeah, I think I have a straight and in reality I don't have one, so stuff like this. Very good at misreading my hand and my board and the board. <laughs> but yeah, maybe that's an issue of yeah, of being too old to be a online poker player. I mean not too old, but yeah, I guess you can you are better than you are I'm a bit younger than me. Yeah, I also often make like terrible mistakes. I often recognize um, in sessions. So when I open them, when I'm like, oh, what what did you do there? This was so stupid. And it feels like always I, I got punished when like the next guy is re-raising and I'm like, oh, fuck, what now? <laughs> yeah, so. And um, I also... For me, it's an issue to play longer sessions. It, it feels like I'm always very sharp and playing very good in like the first one, one and a half hour. And once I play longer, it always feels like I have a win an insane amount in the, in the first one or two hours. And afterwards, it seems like I, I, I lose it all back or at least parts of it. And it feels like nothing is going my way anymore. So, yeah. You should pro for me at least. I should not play too long sessions. Maybe should take breaks in session, which in reality I never do. Um, I, this is also if you are on a good tables and usually it's uh, yeah you start the session have no good tables. Then you got to good tables and then you cannot take a break. I mean you could, but yeah you don't have that much time. I think you can miss two of it. And if you miss a third, then you get kicked. So you could take a 10 minutes break or something. Yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah. And sometimes it feels like you are stupid or something. In these close spots where the pot to stack ratio is very, very small. When you get it in with like an overpair and then your opponent shows it straight. And then you are, oh, fuck. Again, 3% or whatever it is. <laughs> yeah, I guess that's... You probably just ran bad lately. Uh, I think um, that's a feeling like almost every poker player knows. And yeah. Mm, by the way, you are not playing professionally right you are just a ambitious amateur uh, uh, rec recreational player right yeah so semi pro yeah it's it's even worse um, when you are a professional player and you rely on this income and then it's going down and down and more down and then the downswing even gets worse because you play worse in downswing and yeah so that's a spiral. That's very bad because, yeah, first you run bad and then you start to play bad. And yeah, so these are many issues that come together. <laughs> um, how many hands are we talking in which you didn't run that good? Mm, let me meanwhile continue with my small one versus big blind in a single race pot. See how the ranges do there. Uh, Ace I bought. I guess the preflop aggressor again will bet a lot. Yeah, that's the case. Okay, well, why did I click check? That's so stupid. Uh, I think in general, uh, blind versus blind plays kind of aggressive, but not on an Ace I bought. Let's see if, if this tendency humans have uh, also is true in GTO ranges. 
Yeah, I guess because of the positional disadvantage and because he, which range is, yeah, your, I guess the small blinds range should be a lot stronger because the big blind is defending like any four, no, not, not really, but 70%. Uh, so he should have the better overall range. So you can bet often and probably big blind will not attack this bet a lot. Yeah. And yeah, the range advantage goes down. There's no other top cards going, but here, here we still bet a ton and probably big blind will not play back much. I mean, it's also hard to do so with 70% of hands. You often have like queen, six, five, three or something. And yeah, raising definitely is, is not an option. I mean, even calling without a flush draw is debatable maybe. <laughs> so yeah, you see my point. 50K hands. Uh, yeah, how, how many... How long did it take for you to play 50k hands? It could also be uh, maybe um, you get into tough games. For example, when you just play like fast forward poker. Yeah. Okay, but yeah, you're from Germany, right? So you have no great options here yeah, you could go to the unregulated sites where you can still table select yeah so yeah that sucks uh, what, what do you s play rush and cash rush and cash is gg poker right how many tables do you play you could also um consider maybe to to uh, change something and maybe this will get better results so four tables is a lot i would say i mean i i often play uh, four tables zoom and two regular ones but yeah this is very exhausting and yeah i cannot do this for a very long time and i also time out a bunch it seems like always with aces so yeah maybe um go down like one or two tables and see how you're doing <laughs> yeah but your results are also a function uh, of the quality of your opponent so if you always play in very tough fields it's hard to get very good results especially in a high rake environment on mid or micro stakes So yeah, all these boards get bad very frequently from the small blind and yeah, the other big blind can't do much about it. So let's now come to the very interesting part. The three red pots starting with first available position. Unfortunately, not that great findings like we had in our last session so yeah that's again as expected utg checks always he bets always he also will not continue that much even against 50 percent where he should have a minimum defense frequency to not get exploited off what is it so you have to call 25 in order to win 75 so like 66 percent if i'm not mistaken is this correct or is it even 75 percent i mean it's 75 percent right is it oh uh, he makes an auto profit if he bets that small he has a bluff how often does it have to work for him to be break even so if i make a bluff with no equity um i win 55 uh, i risk 25 in order to win 50 this was like <laughs> i shot uh 25 in order to win 50 so that's the calculation right no that's definitely not the calculation um uh, 
It's not the calculation. I think the calculation is this one. Yeah, 33%. Um, yeah, this has to work 33% in order to be profitable if you have no equity and nothing else. And yeah, so UTG would have to defend 66% and he's only defending way less. <laughs> Um, yesterday, um, we were on rainbow boards and this is a flush draw. This has a flush draw too, but seems like it's not changing too much, to be honest. Seems like it's, it's, it's almost, almost the same than before. Yeah. I, I wondered if, uh, something, uh, it would be a a big change or something when a flush draw is possible, but it, it is not. Yeah, again, we see a lot of donking from UTG on these type of boards because he has the advantage in all these sets. Okay. Yeah, I call them rainbow and what is it? What is a? It's not monochrome. What is the expression for this? I call it flush draw ball all the, all the time. Huh. Yeah, not sure. Suited? Mm. Yeah. I guess. Is this a suited flop? Never heard that. I think that's not the expression you want to use. <laughs> Good. Good to be a professional poker player for 100 years and not now this. <laughs> ah, funny. So yeah, I guess. Let's look into his donking range. That's the same as yesterday. Um, nobody has a donking range on this board, but according to GTO, you should donk. I think he's talking less, to be honest. Uh, I think it is even more on the rainbow boards. Uh, so 37 versus 40, if I remember correctly. No, okay. <laughs> I'm mistaken. Uh, it's He's talking more than on these uh, flush draw boards. Single suited, it's called. As, as a single suited, right? Yeah, single suited. <laughs> Maybe this should be a beginner channel. Yeah, he donks more. Uh, my guess would have been that he was, would donk a bit less because preflop aggressor often has the nutted flush draws and stuff. But maybe this is just because it's UTG versus button because UTG usually has double suited hands and also often nut draws. I'm not sure um, in these positions. I mean, yeah, preflop aggressor should have a bit more, I guess, but yeah, for some reason it's donking more. Maybe that's because he can put a lot of pressure on aces without a flush draw. When he himself has a, has weak flush draws and stuff. Let's look into the donking range. Top and bottom high flush draw gut shot. Okay, that's not... Um, Surprising, that's a very strong hand. Although, I guess this is usually getting check raised and not donked. Top pair, not flush blocker. Okay, that's ambitious. Uh, top two, low flush draw. Uh, bottom two. Top, bottom two, high flush draw. What is bottom two, low flush draw doing? Then 
getting re-raised. Interesting, interesting. Mid pair. Right. That's also um, the um, solutions um, were quite different, if I remember correctly, in Poker Trainer and Vision last yesterday. So let's compare again and see uh, what the differences are. Where is King? King, Queen, King, Queen, King, Queen, King, Queen, no, King, Queen, 8, sure, no King, Queen, 8, oh, he is, here it is, but that's not the right one, that, here it is, in um, PLO Trainer, we also got two bed sizes, for UTG, but he is not using the pot size at all. And yeah, he is also having like 8%, 7.5% uh, less donk, donking frequency. Uh, yeah, maybe. Better slow plays, yeah. Oh, yeah, you, your hand is a lot less vulnerable. <laughs> wow, that's a difficult word. <laughs> I butchered it quite a bit. <laughs> I hope you can still understand. Um, mid pair, nut flush blocker, gut shot. So, yeah, some, some bluffs in there too. Top pair, not flush blocker, gut shot. Um, that's probably a bad fold. Although not 100% sure. No pair, not flush blocker, open and straight draw. Let's wrap. My dear. Yeah, we, we had this issue already today. Um, that's interesting. I mean, is this a bad call? Bad fold? <laughs> Yeah, we definitely need to uh, look into this. A no pair, not flush draw, open and straight draw. Okay, that's a monster. And probably that's a wrap, right? Yes, it is. <laughs> Over pair, not flush blocker. I mean, in reality, people never have over pairs here. It's UTG. Although, no, 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 no. 400 BB, people always will fall it. Yeah, definitely about um, the nut flush blocker. I mean, he's even using weaker flush blockers, as you can see here. Middle pair with weaker, with a gut shot and weaker flush blockers also get used sometimes. A three, a, t a deuce. Uh, what are the deuce? Betting me a lot. Uh, nine, four, nine. So you definitely want to uh, block the flush a bit. Uh, what else do we have? Top and bottom, not flush. Okay, that's strong. Top and bottom, flush blocker, open and straight, also strong. Top pair, not for sure. Uh, no pair, flush blocker, open and straight draw. So, oh, that's uh, a wrap. Mm, yeah, these are all wraps, right? Yeah, it looks like it. Mid pair, not flush draw. Mid pair, not flush, flush draw is also interesting. I mean, is this a bad call or what? Probably. Or I can't imagine that it's bad folding. No pair, low flush draw. No pair, low flush draw. No pair, low flush draw. And these has uh, all have like backdoor straights, but not sure if people actually don't this ever. Mm. 
Mm, but yeah, this hand, for example, seven seven six five. Um, yeah, an eight gives uh, not an eight, a nine, a six, a five, a four gives you a lot of additional odds. Mm -hmm. Yeah, nine seven six is like the same story. This one is, although it's not uh, bluffed that often, but still, uh, the very uh, the, the weaker ones seem to have a backdoor flush draw instead of the backdoor straight draws. I guess um, that's not in many people's donking range. Uh, yeah, now not much, not that high of frequency of bluffs happen. Uh, or donks happen. Sets uh, seem to get slow played a decent amount or more than bad. Okay, let's let's uh, see uh, how much he's still folding. <laughs> uh, true. I think I would also not. Oh, I mean, in all of pilot, I would open two, two, four, five. Um, but general, if I play well, I probably don't open it. Mm -hmm. So yeah, after donking, he's folding about half a sense still. No pair flush blocker. Oh, he donks no pair flush blocker sometimes. No pair low flush draw. Yeah, that's not surprising. Uh, no pair open and straight draw. Okay, middle pair gut shot. Top pair gut shot. No pair high flush draw. Mid pair on top pair. But I think that's these are very low frequency donks. No pair flush blocker gut shot. Yeah, the, the, he has a lot of very weak stuff. But I don't donk on these boards. I'm also not sure how much credit people will give you if you bet 50%. With like no pair flush blocker and gut shot. I mean, they don't know what you have this, but I guess you will get a lot of peels and yeah, then yeah, you have to decide what to do on the turn. Mid pair flush blocker gut shot. Bottom pair. Um, okay, let's. Well, I'm searching for some stronger things. Uh, no pair, not flush draw. Folds most of the time. So, what are the ones? Let's still get it in. The ones with better vector straight draws and with a pair where they might outdraw, have more outs to outdraw. Which ones fold? Uh, we also, no, not always, but often have a vector flush draw too. But not always, as I said. Uh, Ace 554 is not good enough. Okay. Ace 776. But Ace 776 also called some. What is it? Ace 77. What? Ace 776? What? This one is reporting? A775. Ah, okay. Instead of a 6, he has a 5, and the backdoor straight draw is, is a bit weaker. A664. Yeah, where you only can have a gut, can make gut shots on the turn, so that's a bit weaker. Yeah, no backdoor flushers. 
Er weg. Ja. Sick. So, not flush draw still fold. I mean, I don't think that anyone who dongs flop and gets raised folds a not flush draw ever. But I also assume that these weak flush draws not get donked that often. People will check call or check raise. Is my um, impression. Top bear high flush draw is not folding anymore. And it seems like 10 high or better and the flush draw has to be. Although this is not continuing. I guess that's uh, probably wisely chosen because you block the straight draws heavily and yeah, if you remove the straight draws from your opponent ra opponent's range or at least decrease the likelihood of him having a straight draw, then he will have a mate hand way more often. Yeah, here we don't block the straights that heavily and we also have backdoor flush draws. And back to straight draws on some occasions. Okay. Mm. Mm. No pair high flush draw with straight draw. Bottom pair not flush draw is not folding anymore. Top two. Top two flush blocker. Yeah, so let's see yourself what is getting in. Bottom two gut shot. Wow, oh, that seems ambitious. Uh, I think the ace seven seven. What was it? Seven seven five had the ace in hearts too. What is this? This is bottom two with a gut shot. Go bad call. That's a bit sick, I feel like. And these gut shots don't even, are not even to the nuts, uh, but at least the first one. Bottom two high flush draw, okay, these top two flush bro, I got short, yeah, that's quite a good hands. Uh, oh, I want to go back one step and yeah, he's raising a decent amount. Uh, let's see what type of hands he is using in his raising range. Uh, not sure. I mean, that's GTO, so nobody can exploit you if you have are using these ranges, at least in theory. So this is perfect, and if you divide from this strategy, you lose EV. But if your opponents divide a lot from GTO, this might not be the perfect strategy but you can never lose money you playing GTO I mean these are not my strategies this is um, these are the GTO solutions provided by PLO vision so I mean I also understand most of the things um, but not sure if I want to put them in, in, in my game. Um, I think uh, donking some things here could be, make sense. I mean, you probably should not have no donking range at all, which I currently have, or not no donking range, but this is a very small one. Uh, 
I, I, I'm not sure. You should raise bottom pair, not flush blocker, and an open and straight draw. That's even worse than top two. <laughs> yeah, obviously these solutions are designed against the range of UTG, and UTG is donking weak stuff, and so you can raise some weak stuff. I think you might get uh, weak uh, or loose raises if you uh, donk 50% in, in a spot like this because people would be like, what the fuck? I, is he kidding me? King, queen, I am the prefab aggressor. I have kings, I have queens. What uh, story is he trying to tell me? And it's also a small bet. I might be able to bluff him off whatever he is donking with. So I think uh, in reality this could work out. Top and bottom flush blocker should raise. Oh, King 8. King 8 feels weak <laughs> to re-raise with. A bottom pair with open and straight draws seems very weak to. Okay, yeah, this, this seems very weak. I mean, this I probably will not <laughs> include in my raising range. Middle pair, nut flush blocker, open and straight draw. So that's uh, basically the same as bottom pair. I mean, Top pair, not flush blocker, open and straight draw. Okay, I, I see this. This is also a wrap, so yeah, that, that would make sense. Middle pair, flush blocker, open and straight draw. Oh fuck. Okay, I, I think I got reco I got disconnected and then reconnected. No, sorry for that. Uh, yeah, that's true. I mean, it, it is hard to uh, think a lot about ranges if you didn't uh, do it. Oh, fuck, I think I have to I think disconnect all the time. These, my internet uh, or, or Twitch seems to have issues. Uh, damn. I think I'm getting uh, re disconnected all the time. I think a, a few times in the last seconds. I hope now it will be fine. Um, yeah, uh, I think it's also hard to think about ranges um, when you play like four table zoom or rush or whatever it's called on GG. So yeah, um, you have to think about ranges and get this into your head and apply these concepts automatically um yeah that's that's the thing so you cannot um if you didn't study these stuff off the tables it's very hard to think about it when multi-tabling in game uh, we, how is it called um phil galfond does a great job always i think I mean, even before GTO and all this stuff, he thought about this stuff and he had very deep thoughts and also good results. So he's like the master. Yeah, I know, but the stream was down. I, I was very tilted. <laughs> but you, I hope you were, were able to hear the last things. I re repeated myself a few times already because I saw that the stream uh, went down. Uh, yeah, probably an issue with my internet. Mm, this is even more annoying when I got these uh, random disconnects uh, on when I'm playing a session. This also happened a few times already. Uh, I think I even lost some big pots because of that. Yeah, I said um, it's very hard to think about ranges when you are multi-tabling or, or four-tabling zoom or rush. So you have to do it off the tables and 
yeah, get a good understanding from this stuff and get it into your blood and uh, that you can make these decisions automatic and uh, don't have to think about it anymore. Mm, uh, I think some do, but most don't. Mm, the guys you want to play against uh, definitely don't, so... <laughs> Top two flush blocker. Top two, yeah, top two is, seems like a good hand to re raise here. Over pair high flush run makes sense. Bottom pair not flush blocker short. Okay, that's getting it in. Bottom pair flush blocker always open and straight draw. That's also ambitious. Uh, yeah, I think we have, yeah, so a few bluffs included here. Mm, what are our calls? But also, yeah, good balanced ranges also have very strong hands to call with. And yeah, 55% of our sets should call. Over pair, not flush or guard shot, wants to just call more than re raising. I think also with an over pair, not flush or guard shot, uh, people usually just go all in. I mean, who is slow playing here? 50% slow play? Uh, I don't see it happening. Uh, on the tables and the games I play to um, play today. Yeah, this is not an ace high board. It's a king high board. <laughs> we we left the ace high board uh, already. Yeah, raising in a cyborg three red pots doesn't make too much sense, and it's also not happening much. Is is any of these uh, ever folding? I guess not. Although, uh, what was it? We raised some very weak bottom pair, not flush block open and straight draw. Can it fold? Or will a hand like this? I think it cannot fold anymore, right? So. Maybe. So yeah, nothing is folding anymore. <laughs> okay. Uh, I so it seems like um, if you move up a bit in stakes, um, people will not do this that often. I, if I would to have to say, I would say it's very rarely happening in my games. Uh, people generally expect, um, respect the a side board and the preflop aggressor and often will call, will just call even with strong hands like top two or another set. Mm, so let's compare this with Mr. J. Nendez. So yeah, he has, um, two different race sizes and yeah the smaller one also is used but mainly the bigger one is utilized um, if we raise small I guess we could still have some folds right uh, I guess we made the mistake, so he is all in, and then, yeah. But <laughs> what? Why should you re-raise ace, ace, queen, deuce? So I guess that's a re-bluff or something. Okay. Yeah, yeah, that's that are exactly the guys who don't think in ranges, but just think, okay, I flopped top pair and a gut shot. I know I have to get it in. I'm too strong. Um, not recognizing that your opponent often has top set, and that might even be the majority of his range. Although I would say even bad fish now <laughs> that on an ace board when we got three bet we should be scared 
uh, have that your opponent could have top set but yeah what I also um how should I uh, verify uh, you mean with uh, Jay Nandes yeah <laughs> I, I just um, compare a bit but it seems like yeah, it seems like um, Vision is a bit more aggressive than Jay Nandes, Vision, uh, Jay Nandes PLO trainer, but yeah, it's but still a lot of uh, donking happening. Okay, and, and what was the answer from the Vision guys? They use some, they use loose buckets? How can, I mean, how can this ever be the case? I mean, normally, um, the sol how the solver works is that you define a situation when you say, okay, you have this bed size, this race size, this re-race size, and then it's just calculating on its own. It's just uh, comparing results um, by running the same situations like infinite amount of times. I mean, not infinite, but a very large number. Then uh, at some point um, it becomes clear what the best solution in every spot is. So how the fuck can they use uh, loser buckets? They used some loose bug and you didn't agree with in this uh, for PLO. Uh, you mean that like some hands are treated like we are the same, although in reality they are not. So like let's say if you don't have the the backdoor flush draw, all the stuff with no backdoor flush draw is treated the same. Mm, I also don't agree with uh, Jay Nendis when he is turning off solutions way too early and then you often have, they, they often didn't converge to an equilibrium yet. So he also is not uh, perfect. Yeah, but we uh, we will have bigger bigger buckets, I assume. Than just in your example, yeah, I know. But yeah, um, I think um, if these guys who run these sims make mistakes or yeah calibrate the solver wrong we can get completely screwed results but it's, it still seems that the ranges are not that way that much off i, I also i'm not an expert in uh, doing sims and stuff so but yeah um i tried it a bit and yeah it's very annoying it takes so much time you need a very good computer and it seems like a monka has like infinite bugs so yeah that's so annoying to deal with it and yeah it's way more convenient to trust uh, jay nendis and the vision guys but maybe you should not So on the Queen Jack board, the donking goes down a lot. Uh, let's see what uh, Poker Trainer uh, thinks about this. The 
let's compare the two solutions. Uh, queen jack deuce. Queen jack and the deuce, but that's not the one we are looking for. So where is it? Queen jack deuce. Oh, here it is. So they we copy boards from each other, but um, to make it not too obvious, they change suits. Well played. Okay. Mm, but we can look into uh, Monka preflop Sims. <laughs> For example, here or and here too, so it can solve it. Um, yeah, again, uh, Jane and the solution wants to donk less. So look at it at this. So if I want to um, solve preflop, I go on. Uh, for example, if he raises from here, then oh, that's uh, a bit. That's a tough situation that will not come up that often. So what should I do from the the button now? And he will give me a solution. So these things are solved. So you should realize five percent, and yeah, I could. Uh, you think that will make a big difference? Donking frequency is still the same if I change the suit. Yeah, but sometimes it makes a difference. For example, um, when the, the uh, deuce is an ace, then yeah, you can in, in the top pair and ace high flush draw is possible, but when we do it this way, when it's not anymore, so yeah. <laughs> but usually this is not impacting things a lot, I feel. So again, a lot of donking and he's also not that aggressive when getting checked to. Whoops. Hmm. Doing some misclicks. Backpack. So, what else should we want to, we want to find out? Uh, how often is he raising? I guess not that often. Although, yeah, okay, decent amount. And let's again compare this with Jay Nenda's solution. Now I will take forever to find. The board again, I guess. Like, oh no, I'm, I'm way faster now. Mm, queen, so I, but I should click here. Cause, mm, mm, wow, no. Switch. We. It's not possible to give give him the give them the range of the same board. Ugh. Yeah, queen. I mean, this should not make that huge of a difference. Oh, I'm already exhausted again. This is very tiring. Oh, I clicked into heads up. Uh, no, I don't think so. I mean, I, I, I don't even bought the heads up solution, so that should not work out. Mm, so if he do, does this, how much, how often is he raising? So yeah, he is using half pot a bit, but yeah, it seems like full pot is the f size you want to use most of the time. Uh, 
and yeah, compare the two, then you also go to 21%. Yeah, so seems like this is uh, quite similar. Uh, I'm not sure if the 50% size makes too much sense because how many bluffs can you still have this scenario? And even if you want to bluff with these sheep sizing, uh, yeah, you can very easily commit yourself and I mean that happens I think that happened a lot to, to other players too and I mean the, the, the expert in accidentally committing himself is a stickman he is playing high stakes fixed limit and also high stakes PLO and he always just does like stupid re-raises and when he gets shoved on him and he's like oh god and yeah he then uses his whole time bank and then figures okay we i raised as a bluff but now i realize that my hand is is good enough to call it off and then in the last second he he, he calls <laughs> and then he usually gets lucky so that's how stickman is playing yeah on the jack 10 6 No, I don't think um, that he is playing. Uh, I can't imagine what he's playing. I also thought that he was never too great. But yeah, he, he could have improved a lot. But uh, when I was playing um, high stakes very often, then he was definitely not that good. And he was purely bum hunting. And I think this probably is still the case. I mean, I often see people sitting at PLO 5k and stuff, but usually there's no game. There are like just two people waiting and yeah, no game running at all. I mean, one weekend there was one and I was in there too, but yeah, usually no PLO 5k is running anymore and stars, at least not in the morning when I usually play. Mm, was this guy from Brazil? I'm not sure, but yeah. At this day, five, two tables were running. Um, two, um, two guys, um, two fish were willing to play high stakes. The one guy even moved up to 10k and I also uh, played in there. I got lucky. Coolered him one time. I mean, yeah, let's say it was a cooler. I had a I was three betting, it's kind of speculative, and then he was all in, and we only had 40 BB, and then I caught off the rest for 4k, and I got lucky. Mm. Yeah, I think um, many of the high stakes wrecks um, just uh, went to GG and only played GG, because, yeah. I think there's not much other action going on on other sides. Um, yeah, VPN, so Winning Poker Network, has sick um, 40k action, I think. But yeah, I, as I think, there's a lot of collusion going on on this side. Um, I don't play there, but they have very sick tables. They have a 40k PLO, no red hole tables so you cannot reset your stack for a whole week so if you win uh, like 80k on mon monday and then you want to go go again and play on friday then you will have to join with the 120k stack again so yeah very long time until you can uh, join with a shorter stack again and yeah, there we have often very uh, interesting and gigantic stacks like 600k and stuff because yeah, they, they, if they play every day, they have never the option to reset the stack size. And yeah, so at one point they will be very, very deep. <laughs> yeah, I think uh, at least in these standard uh, solvers you only have 100 rb but it would be very interesting to have 400 and 200 rb i think there are some solutions for 200 rb out there but unfortunately 
yeah, it's getting harder and harder to solve these uh, deep stack games because you have way more um, possibilities to, and and the tr game tree gets a lot bigger, and you need a very good computer to get this solved. Mm, yeah, I hate tourneys, so I never play tourneys. <laughs> And yeah, I I am also um, the guy bashing GG all the time. I have a lot of YouTube videos about them. Uh, I think in general the site is yeah a bit shady, and yeah, it's very hard to beat high stakes on there because you are not allowed to bum hunt, and they have insane rakes. So yeah, that's the, the, that's why I don't play on there. Yeah, but if if we want to me to be an ambassador uh, and get good rake back deal or stuff, I, I would I would definitely play there because I think um, they have the softest games and yeah, according to Jay Nendez, he does not have a special deal. He gets um, some salary or stuff, but um, the rake back is the same as for everyone. But yeah. Not sure if it's right. Um, it might be. I mean, I have no reason to think that he's lying, but yeah, I also have no reason to trust him. Uh, yeah, I, I just don't know. Uh, maybe a bum hunting. Yeah, it could could be just bum hunting. I have no idea. Hmm. I mean, also, I think you probably can still bum hunt, but I'm uh, not sure if I've, how fast they will recognize. Mm, I mean, you would be crazy to play just every game like um, all these uh, streamers do. I mean, I played a bit on GG. Yeah, I played a bit on GG and it's they got very good fish and they have done a done a great job uh, getting recreational player to the side and yeah, they definitely have the most fishy games. But yeah, still hard to beat it um, if you have to pay an insane amount of rake. And yeah, I'm. I'm not confident enough to play on their high stakes with these rake um, when there's still this bum hunting policy in place where they could just confiscate my entire bank roll for bum hunting. I mean, bum hunting is a normal and essential part of poker, so I'm not sure how they think that this could be forbidden. Mm, how is his, his name on GG? Is he. Imagine King 2 or is he uh, using another snake? So we are on the jack high board, a lot of donking again and he is playing cautious I guess. Yep. <laughs> uh, but um, the guy calling him same, same himself Imagine King could also be a wreck. I mean, uh, you now scout three two seven six or something. Yeah, okay, fifty VPIP is a huge indicator that it might be him. But I think Imagine King wasn't playing that reckless. Uh, last time I played him on stars, he had like only 40 VPIP or something. And he is also not the the most stupid fish you can, can get. I mean, there are people out there that would play a lot worse than him, but yeah, he's definitely not winning. But yeah, as I said, you can play against a lot worse player. I, I only think that he's like a semi-fishy, but not like a huge whale or something but on these stakes you yeah people will definitely go after after him yeah 
Scout to three two six. I think that's his name. Back from the No Limit Hold'em days, he lost over multiple sides, probably like ten million or something. And I'm not sure if he's still playing. He also played some PLO. He also improved a lot. Uh, he must have got his hands on a preflop shot or something. In the beginning, he played like sixty. A VPIP and then in the end he only played 30 but yeah he still had big leagues um, I mean at some points he all of the time played like long sessions and in the end he got just got bored and then shoved all in preflop for 200 BP with 6-6 six, six or something so he played solid and then yeah a switch turned in his head and when he got crazy or bored or whatever and then he gave it all back So let's continue with the next board. Mm. Yeah, the preflop aggressor. Oh. Yeah, he's betting like 100%. He has a huge advantage. That's always the same. So that's a bit boring. Let's move on to this. Let's see if he's checking a lot. Yeah, not that much, but yeah. Would you have expected that he's checking 63% on this board? I mean, my usual approach was to bet a lot, but yeah, on this board, actually, um, yeah, he does not have a clear advantage um, because, yeah, have to go to the, have to answer the door very quickly. We'll be back. Sorry for that. Mm. Also needed to get some nutrition. Mm. Mm. What is my average stack? Good question. Mm. Probably like PLO 200. <laughs> no, it didn't uh, do that well in crypto. Um, I'm just, I just was very good in, in poker. <laughs> or, yeah, the right time, right place. I mean, I. I didn't play it in the golden very good days, but I joined not much later and yeah, I was lucky to win th some money back in the days and yeah, I think I'm still very good. <laughs> yeah, something like that, although I always uh, played a lot of mistakes like PLO 400, PLO 600, P 
Pillow 1k, Pillow 2k. And yeah, also um, yeah, played uh, high stakes and even sky stakes. Then um, games ran. And nowadays, yeah, I mean, the theory behind all this interests me more than when actually playing. And yeah, I have fun um, exploring it and also teaching it to other guys and even doing it for free. I mean, it would be nice if I had more, more viewers and could monetize and stuff, but yeah, that's how it is. I mean, I'm not, let's say, wasting more of my time than I would anyways, because I would go through with spots in any case. So yeah, if I do it on my own or if I Twitch, while doing so, not that much difference. And yeah, I might get yeah some other sources of income in this way. Although at this point I doubt that because yeah, it seems like uh, this is a bit too dry and people want to um, have people playing and chill and don't really want to learn. <laughs> at least, yeah, that's true for most of the guys. And I mean, I'm the same. If I turn on Twitch, I want to be entertained. Although sometimes I also want to learn, yeah, depending on my mood. So, surprisingly, this is not a spot you should continuation bet a lot. And if you bet, the main sizing is 50%. Against 50%, um, UTG is not attacking that much. But what was wrong? Uh, what happens once he checks? And he should do the, a check like one third of the time. But yeah, UTG is not going too hard after him on this board. What about on this structure? Mm. No. It's about the same, I think even a bit more betting. I guess um, UTG has a lot has a, an advantage in kings because you are not betting have three betting many kings in these positions, but UTG can have, still have strong kings or yeah, not mediocre kings. Small blind should not check raise aces here. Not sure if he's even doing that much check raising. Let's see. So he should step 39%. So yeah, let's let's find out what his check raises are. Probably aces with a flush draw and a gut shot. Uh, aces with a flush draw, but not no aces with um, nothing. Overpair, high flush draw, open and straight draw. Yeah, so these are very strong, and the overpair will be ace aces most of the time. Top pair, flush blocker, open and straight draw. So, okay, that's not an open straight draw. Yeah, we mentioned this uh, many times already. What is that? What is that? <laughs> yeah, that's not an open straight draw, that's just a wrap. Yeah, I'm so far, I assume that preflop aggressor can be uh, very aggressive on these high card boards still but um, that's actually not the case and these are also like unique positions um, we or over pair low flush draw and a gut shot wants to get it in yeah you see what he is uh, check raising with and yeah I guess um, check 10 6 is kind of similar to the queen yeah, on the A side board you got a range advantage, a decent range advantage, but not here. Yeah, this is also a lot of defending and also quite a bit of raising once continuation bets. And yeah, if he gets checked to, he is betting like yeah, a bit less than 50%. So now we get to the very interesting um, positions. So here again, the aggressor 
always has a huge advantage and he will and this um, yeah also you can see this in the ranges he is never betting and he is betting like close to 100 percent and if he bets he also will not get or you will get that's um interesting and surprising but he gets uh, fought back that much uh, this probably is because yeah his free bet is a is wide no not not, not the widest but yeah like nine percent or something and then you can for fight back a bit even when your opponent has the advantage on top sets but yeah you can still have uh, good draws and stuff that flip against it and yeah you also have a lot of full equity because yeah it looks strong very strong and also keep in mind um, your opponent is continuation betting 100% uh, and yeah aces probably is like uh, he's also check he also has to check some aces um, to be balanced so Aces probably is like 15% of his range only. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so not flush draws with some backup like to check raise or good mate hand with a mediocre draw. Set not flush blocker, okay. Middle pair, that's just a call. Uh, so. There's no bluff in here, right? These are all good hands. Yeah, no block, no bluff in there at all. As you can see, is there? Uh, no bluff, no bluff, no bluff, no bluff, no bluff. What are his bluffs? No pair high flush draw, but only at a very low frequency. Mm, yeah, <laughs> I just uh, look into this stuff. Probably should take notes. Um, definitely should, but <laughs> as a matter of fact, I don't do. I just uh, try to go get a good understanding and yeah, look into spots. Uh, I mean, if I play a, a session, I always take screenshots and I review them after each and every session. And yeah, there you learn, um, yeah, what to do in certain spots over time. But yeah, it takes a lot of time, and um, nobody is perfect playing perfect. I mean, everyone is so far off GTO. Only the bots or the people who have real-time assistance can get close to GTO. All other guys are way, way, way off. That's what I can tell you. I mean, almost nobody uh, knows what to do. And even, I mean, in No Limit Hold'em, it's, it's, it's a lot easier to get close to GTO. But here, you have so many hand combinations and stuff. It's way, way harder to um, play GTO in PLO. And also, it's often like impossible to see the pattern um, um, which is behind the raising and calling and yeah, sometimes um, hands for us humans seem to be the same and one he, the solver is folding and the other one he's re-raising so yeah very very hard to uh, to play perfect or nearly perfect in PLO so yeah just get a good uh, and a good understanding like a, a baseline concept from this stuff and then yeah still play exploitative especially against the weaker opponents uh, is it possible i mean nobody's the yeah, minimized strategy yeah you for example um in f many spots where you have like two bet sizings only one is uh, utilized or almost exclusively like one size is used the other has like a very low frequency when you can 
remove the one bed size or in, in spots where you will check like 95% you can just make it easier and make it 100% but uh, making a minimized strategy without losing too much EV um, will be hard and it's also it also should not be your goal I mean if you are not a high stakes player and play against the toughest of the toughest opponents then your goal should be to get decent in all these stuff and then uh, yeah just get a good read on your opponents and yeah still play exploitative strategy i mean especially against the recreational players which you want to have on your tables if you play without them yeah you doing something wrong in my mind you should always have soft games in which you play and if there are no soft games you should not play at all I mean, at least I play poker to make money and yeah, if I play against a tough field and the rank is high as well, then it's very hard to make money and yeah, then I should not play at all. Yeah, the story is completely different if you do it for fun, then you probably should not get into this at all and just play. So yeah, it depends on your goals, but... Yeah, if you want to get good, just uh, get a baseline under the idea of what you should do in certain spots with GTO and yeah, adjust according to your opponent's tendencies. I mean, for example, um, the cutoff of uh, donking range here should t be 25%. I think for most people it's 0%. And yeah, including me. So yeah, you can still be way off and the optimal strategies and still earn a very good amount if you ha have like other skills i mean it, it should not be your skill to learn all this by heart your skill should be i mean you you need b skills let's uh, talk, um, name them this way uh, which are may way more important so you, you should not till for example um, you have to have a solid bankroll management and also um, if you are a bummer and a hunter if you are able to get in all the good games then this is worth more than being a GTO wizard but not being able to get in good games okay, this is as easy as it is I mean let's talk about Tom Dwan he I mean in the high stakes community he always um everyone is saying that he is a fish and this also was be the case back in the day like 2010 or whatever it was and yeah in the media he was be a genius and a poker god but in reality that was not true and still is not but he is able to get in these games with all these rich Chinese businessman and makes a, and he makes a killing. Yeah, that's probably true. Yeah, that's exactly what I said. You must be able to get in the good games and yeah, you will do fine, even if you are not theoretical the best player. So look at what kind of hands should be donked, like middle pair, nut flush blocker, top pair, nut flush blocker, mid pair, nut flush blocker, gut shot. So a lot of weak stuff, but also some very strong stuff like top pair, nut flush draw and gut shots. And yeah, nobody has this range. I mean, in reality, people just assume that this is a good board for the preflop aggressor. So we check 100% of the range fold these bluffs like middle pair and flush blocker against the bed and just check raise all the good stuff and i used to do so as well for the longest time i'm, I'm not even sure if i want to put this in my game i, I don't although this is probably smart to um, use a range similar to that one because many people would just not know how to react i mean what do you do as a people aggressor when you face a 50 percent donk on the board like this 
you probably are like 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 mm, what the fuck is going on and uh, let's be honest if you have aces here and you will have aces a lot like 15 20 percent something like that um you can't do that much you probably are just calling and might be folding the best hand against middle pair nut flush blocker later yeah that's always very good if you are able to put your opponents into spots that we don't know much about and this will force them to make mistakes mm, yeah it's the same in no limit hold'em i think and it can be used partly in pot limit omar too so if you use very small bets for example i mean that's not a gto approach but it's very easy to make uh, mistakes against someone who bets very small and yeah in, peel, uh, in no limit hold'em you can also bet very big and that's also confusing and put people in uncomfortable situations where they are forced to make mistakes if they did not think this through as well as you did but you have to have to figure this out um, beforehand otherwise you might be the one <laughs> who gets destroyed Mm, yeah good good question so let's see if he donks what what is his ranging what he's raising a decent amount as you can see let's first uh, look into this and then let's find out um, what the middle pair with the nut flush blocker does on a two of hearts yeah you can see that similar hands like the ones that donk also want to re-raise top pair not flush blocker open and straight draw middle pair not flush blocker open and straight draw bottom pair flush blocker open and straight draw so weak set hands but also very strong ones like set of a flush blocker but yeah let's say he just calls and yeah what is cut off now doing mm. okay he bets 50 percent mainly Let's load his hands. I also wonder what um, the nut flush blocker with middle pair does. I guess it bets, but let's see. I mean, I would bet. Yeah, middle pair nut flush blocker gut shot wants to bet. Even no pair with flush blocker wants to bet. I mean, this is just a jack high blocker or a six high blocker. Although this is not um, betting much. So the higher flush blockers still continue. <laughs> yeah, oh, oh, right, right. He pots it. It's not even fifty percent. So he pots it and he folds against the race. I guess. I mean, he has to. <laughs> His hand is nothing. <laughs> yeah, no pair, not flush blocker, open and straight draw. Also fifty percent betting. Yeah, um, this is also a thing uh, most humans can't do. I mean, the solver is always finding enough bluffs. But if you play PLO, you often play against opponents where I can't imagine they will find in certain spots enough bluffs so that you can make a lot of tough laydowns. Mm. Ac actually, um, an opponent recently exploited me by making a very tough laydown, folding second nuts, when he um, applied this concept. So uh, I think I called his uh, turn pot size bet with what was it? Gut shot and a back uh, and a nut flush draw, maybe a pair two. Don't remember um, anymore if I had a pair too, but it definitely had the nut flush draw and the and the gut shot to the nuts. And on the river, the flush came in, and I just donked for pot, and he folded, showing the king high flush. And he said that he thinks that I have no bluffs in this spot, and that's why he has to fold. And he was right. And yeah, in this situation, for example, it would be very hard for me to to 
to have bluffs. I mean, what bluff could I have? I mean, I think I will have some bluffs, like a rep was possible. So I could have called a rep with the nut flush blocker. Or yeah, that's basically it. So like a rep with nut flush blocker, or I could turn, otherwise I would have to turn like two pair into a bluff, but also have the nut flush blocker. So yeah. That's the thing. It's very hard um, to have your ranges set correctly in these spots. And yeah, it, it often uh, I often feel like the same in some spots and make tough laydowns. Especially against opponents that I don't consider to be very bluffy and that in general play straightforward. Yeah, here again, a lot of a huge donking range where most people don't have one. And also the preflop aggressor is checking the majority of the time. Not sure if people do this in reality. I guess it's similar on this one, yeah. 1% donking, 1% less donking and yeah. Again, checking more than 50%. Now the real interesting situations come in. Mm, again, I think like maybe I say like 70% continuation, but okay, it's a lot more. <laughs> I thought um, because you know, okay, it's, it's an ace I bought again. So here's continuation, but 100% and You will not get attacked at all. I mean, that's because the button is having a very wide range. But I think even on this board, it already changes. You will not bet that much anymore, like 66%. Oh, I'm wrong. He's betting way more. So against the button, you can still go crazy. Yeah, and the button also has to uh, remain passive because he has like a 50% range minus a few things he's folding against three bet. Yeah. And his raising percentage increases the lower the highest board card gets. Yeah, here, yeah, here also the Continuation bet frequency finally declined a bit. But once he bets, yeah, now button can defend a lot. This is more board that's a bit in button's favor too. Now, the last one. It's yeah, I think um, this session we didn't get that many new discoveries and found interesting stuff anymore like in the last one uh, where I analyzed the the rainbow um, boards of this type. Yeah, again, the preflop aggressor on A-side boards always is very active. On King Queen, probably the small blind will do a decent amount of donking. Wow, that's not, that's like insanely high. And yeah, I mean, the supposedly optimal solution is to donk almost 40%. And yeah, that's also a thing nobody does in reality. I mean, at least I don't feel like a, someone or many people have a donking frequency that high on king queen eight. King queen eight. Mm, I want to compare um, to poker trainer. And yeah, this is also messed up. Um, found about found out about this earlier. Um, this just has complete different sizing when when normal uh, in this spot he's using like 
what is he using half pot and three quarters pot in, instead of uh, half pot and full pot so that's an inconsistency I don't really really get and yeah if you have to use the bigger sizing then the small blind is only donking half uh, that much or even less than with a 50% sizing. So not sure. So this is a huge, huge difference between uh, PLO vision and, and um, poker trainer. And I'm not sure what to make out of it. What do you think about this? I mean, that's very strange. I mean, I've probably if it would be 50%, it's probably also, I mean, you can donk a bit more when the sizing is less, but this will never ever go up to an amount like this. So yeah, wonder what's going on here. Anyways, um, after he donks, he will not face that much fighting back. And yeah, the, the big blind will often just call. And even if he's getting checked to, he will check back the majority of the time. And yeah, in reality, I think people will bet this almost always. We treat it like an ace high board, just assuming that they are very strong on king or queen high boards, while this is not the case. I mean, I made this error too a few days ago, and yeah, just learned about it recently. Uh, on this board, he's also doing a ton of donking. Um, let's compare it to this one. Um, but we need to change board first. Uh, somehow this is this is working okay. Um, so he raises, he calls, he got the queen jack seven. Queen Jack Seven and again using completely different sizing. Uh, yeah, again, there's a huge gap. Okay, uh, let's also compare the continuation bit. Okay, the continuation bit is very similar once check to but yeah. The donking range for some reason is very different and I guess there's also yeah, a decent amount of check raising happening here. Check 10-6. Mm, yeah, again, decent amount of donking. I guess here it will all again be less. Uh, raise, raise, call. Check ten six. Check ten. Mm. Here we go. Download twenty versus.
36. Huh. I would really like to talk to someone who has Yeah, okay, you are right. Um, I think preflop they also are quite different, especially. I mean, I'm, I think the most difference or the mo the we differ the most for the button in the preflop ranges, and yeah, also not sure what the rake structure is in vision. I mean, that's not displayed anywhere, and then. PLO trainer, you could choose a different um, rake structures. Yeah, it has to, but. But still, this seems to be off a lot, although this, the bed size is also, the bed size use is different. I also wonder why for small blind versus big blind um, other bed sizes are in place so if he's facing a donk places it passive most of the time and probably also does a lot of checking back yeah how much checking back is PLO trainer doing Check yeah. This is this is very. This matches quite well. So that's it's very surprising that then the small blind uh, strategy is that much different. So what are the key takeaways from this today? Um sure. uh, I think on these two high card boards the preflop aggressor always wants to go after it hard when it's an ace high board and if it's a king high board or lower he often does not want to Want to play it as aggressive as it's usually played, and there's all, there should also be a lot of donking from the out of position player, and this is not part of most people's game. Uh, I think we. Where is it? What is it? Uh, is it uh, let's look into this very shortly. I want to see again. I want to compare the single suited to the rainbow board so he is doing quite a lot of donking the in position player wants to also play passive compared to um, how the games actually play and what happens if i make this rainbow king queen eight 25 percent was the donking if I remember correctly, yeah, it's so it's not um, changing much, and yeah, I think that's quite similar. So, what other positions can we think of? Um, small blind versus UTG. Yeah, let's look into this if there are any differences between the rainbow and the single suited board so he wants to bet 51% of the time and the sizing is 50% and if checked to yeah he checks more than he's betting Yeah. Oh, I 
I think I forgot to uh, change it to this. Now that I did, oh, this is, this is <laughs> I can't remember. I think it's a lot less betting, right? So check 33% and against Sec, check 63% I yeah so we can bet more on the rainbow board huh. that's a bit surprising because our free betting range is a lot double suited and I would have assumed that a board that is Thing is, it suits us more. Uh, yeah, that's probably true. That the rainbow boards are more polarized in equity. But how does how should this change? And what is he doing? That's about the same if I can remember correctly. Although that's is oh. maybe also the positions are Hard to say what what the reason for this is, at least for me. Uh, what are the differences on small blind versus button? So that's a single suited version. He wants to bet a lot. And if check to button cannot do much and has to check back a lot. Okay, and then this is a rainbow. Probably wants to bet even more. Yeah, he wants to bet always. And I guess it's easier here. I'm not sure. I mean, the The small blind is three betting, so and many most hands um, that three bet have are double suited and have decent suits. So I would guess that that's probably the same or something. Although the small blind has more aces and they not necessarily have a suit, so yeah, I guess that might balance out and they are like equally likely or something to have good flush draws or even not flush draws and yeah here here it's probably the case that you can bet that recklessly because a button has a 50 percent range and yeah on a flush draw board it's way easier for him to fight back uh, yeah and he will have a decent amount of flush draws too in position yeah i think it should be like 20 percent so 20 percent versus your three betting range will be like five percent although if any, when it is five percent it includes all aces and half of the range is aces and these aces are not necessarily having good suits so in the flush draw category, he could have the advantage. If I think about it. Yeah, 
Yeah, we need PLO calc. I think that's the program that can answer these questions. Uh, so that, that was quite of unfortunate, I feel, because yeah, we did not learn that much. And it also doesn't um, help to analyze this in rainbow and single suited boards because it's played not that much different, I feel like. But yeah, I mean, you don't know in, in advance. Unlucky, but yeah. Yeah, um, I was also um, yesterday very surprised when I saw that you should have a ton of leads on these king queen and queen jack high, queen jack boards against the prefab aggressor and yeah I, I think almost nobody has and yeah so far I also assumed that the prefab aggressor has a huge advantage because he's re-raising high cards usually but yeah I think that's actually not the case and I think um, the non-aggressor has a lot more sets in these scenarios because yeah against the early positions kings are usually not re-raised but the kings that open raise often still call and same is true for queens so they can have more sets uh, yeah and you will have like especially if you re-raise against the early positions have a lot of ace ace and yeah that's not doing too well on like two high cards which you don't hit but yeah the other guy can easily have it yeah i guess that's it for today uh thanks for watching um yeah until next time when we hopefully get to another board um, where we have more um surprising findings and stuff that we could put into our game and get a little bit better yeah gg uh, good luck at the tables bye guys